What side are you on? Bull? Uh, bear? I'm on the bullish side. And, you know, first of all, I think a 10% pullback, if we do get that, gets bought just like that. I mean, if you think about the market in August, you know, we corrected 4 or 5% and you fast forward. If you're on vacation, you blinked and you missed it. You know, the stocks are almost back to their to their highs from the earlier this summer. And the reason, Scott, why I think any pullback gets bought, and I'm not in the bearish camp, is because, look, this economy, I don't think, is headed into an imminent recession. You've got the third quarter GDP that's on track for 5.6%. You've got consumer spending that's very resilient. And, you know, the biggest thing that makes me say that I don't think we're headed for a recession mm -hmm. is that... The Fed is maybe just getting too restrictive. You know, yes, rates are 5.5 percent, but if you account for what the neutral rate is, we, what inflation is, we might just be slightly restrictive. So that doesn't typically tilt the economy into a recession. So that may not be a 2024 event. And you think that that can last? The economy can keep humming along, the consumer can say, stay strong enough, and inflation comes down enough? It's all going to really hinge on that. Yeah, I mean, I think it can. And first of all, you know, it's all about employment and the consumer is gainfully employed. It's fully employed. And yes, the unemployment rate is 3.8 percent. But the only reason for that is that more people, we had a spike, more reason for that is because we had more people enter the labor force. You've got wage growth that is strong. And I think probably the biggest reason why the consumer has been so resilient, everybody worries about these lagged effects. Well, most consumers are paying mortgage rates that are in the threes or maybe twos. Most consumers not seeing this big reset said higher in debt expenses. And so why should a consumer that's gainfully employed all of a sudden tighten the belts all that much? That's all good. But how do you, even under that optimistic scenario, justify current valuations given where rates are and where the economy is, is, is still trending. Right. How well, do you do that? I think valuations are full and they're fair. I think they're fair for the current level of rates. Uh, they're fair for the current level of growth. And I think they're fair for what the forward-looking earnings expectations may be. And obviously, there's distinctions within the sectors. But if I look at tech, for example, we all worry about tech valuations. But if I have a company that is growing their earnings at 10, 12, 20 percent, you know, versus the S&P 500 that is maybe growing the earnings at, you know, 5 to 10, for 5 to 10 percent, of course, I'm going to pay a higher multiple for the higher growth company. But you're not worried about the fact that that earnings growth in the very companies you're talking about has been coming in, not going up? Uh, that was the case uh, earlier this year. That was the case in 2022. But when I look at earnings revisions now, they're actually trending up versus down. That's true for technology. That's true for cyclicals. And, it, it, and Scott, what happened is if you look at consensus GDP forecast for this quarter, it was virtually, you know, 0.5 percent, 1 percent. It's moved higher to 2 percent, but it's still there's still this delta between the now cast that's at 5.6 percent. So the reason I bring that up is because as analysts have been behind the curve forecasting sluggish economy and the economy surprise to the upside, they're now having to revise the equity analysts are having to revise their earnings estimates higher. So I think we're actually in a positive part of the earnings revision cycle. You think the makeup of the market, even as you remain bullish, is going to change that we're going to be talking about more than just technology? Look, energy was at one point today the only positive sector. Last month it was the only positive sector. How, how should we think about the, the makeup of this market? Yeah. I think it's really important to have the barbell approach. I mean, look, I am a believer in tech and, you know, because, partially because of the secular growth and, you know, the artificial intelligence. And, you know, I want to have that in my portfolio, but probably can't be the only thing because there is a risk that, for example, headline inflation starts to creep back higher. And by the way, the culprit of that is going to be energy. So I do want to have some energy in the portfolio. And I think Saudi Arabia, Russia pact today really shows you that that aligns wants to keep oil prices elevated and higher oil prices while bad for consumer inflation is good for energy equities so I want to have that barbell in the portfolio I also previously talked about financials and they've done okay not great recently but I do think that if capital markets do uh, reinvigorate themselves in the back half of the year you know if some of the IPO activity picks up if the economy doesn't fall apart then that's good news for financials as well so I do think a barbell of tech and cyclicals makes sense but I would be selective you don't look at any since you mentioned oil's impact on the consumer you don't look at any of that recent retail whether it's earnings or, or other information that leads you to believe that you know once the spending on all of that summer travel subsides and the spending on the experiences and all the concerts et cetera subsides right. that the economy and the consumer are in fact going to start to slow and oil going up consistently like it's been for the last seven or eight days is just the the thing that we don't need at this right. particular moment well i think consumer spending is going to slow